Hello Akron fans! This is ShadowPeer233 with another match for you. This time on Verdant Basin, a map by another map maker, not me, Kron Aberrant again, the guy who made Kratoria. And this match is going to be between Kron and Ipstick. I'm just going to go back earlier on make sure that Kron is doing anything. Okay, so Kron is going for CISO, opening up, and Ipstick is also going for CISO, so it's a CISO mirror at this point, unless people change the races later on, which they are prone to do. So, at this point, Remember, CISO Mirror, it looks like they're setting up their main bases, and I'm just going to go over the map a bit. This is a rather different map to the ones that I've shown so far. Instead of being a bunch of line expansions reminiscent of StarCraft, instead this is very decentralized, more like Total Annihilation or Supreme Commander. And it's rather interesting that way, so if... You'll see it later on throughout the game, Ipstick and Kron will both be sending out their resource processors just around the map entirely. Looks like Ipstick is quite keen on going out and expanding. Kron is also expanding, but she's expanding a bit further back into her base. Rather, Ipstick is expanding out and over to the left side in this mountain here. So he will be pretty soon setting up, and it looks like both players are setting up. Kron has actually got a fairly early importer as well. So Ipstick is going for a very economic build. Kron is going for a economic build with some military force as well, which is a good idea because this is a very small map as well. I should probably point that out. This is a probably, I think, 128 by 128, or maybe a bit larger. So, it's fairly small, and it's got this nice wide open middle point, so it's really easy to get through. And I apologize for this text in the corner here, that's... that shouldn't be happening, that was an issue with an earlier monitor. Anyway, I'm just... ignore that. So, I'll explain in the description. Anyway, so, Kron is actually going for early factory as well, so Kron is quite keen on going for an early rush, while Istik is just going full on for economy. He hasn't built an importer yet at all, or a factory or anything. He's just building up, actually special is also just in his base as well, so he has not built up much at all. Kron, however, is building up quite a bit militarily. Her factory is almost done. It's now done, and now she is building up. She is upgrading machinery in her armory, so she'll have advanced vehicles as well. So it looks like Kron's going for a very aggressive build, while Istik is on the other hand, going for a very economic build, so if Ipstick can hold off an early attack, he'll be fine, but on a map like this, that's this small, I seriously doubt he's going to be able to too do too much. Anyway, so... Anyway, so, as I was saying, Kron is setting up a military attack. I'm just going to go back. She seems to be doing something further in the past. I'm just going to go back to follow her. So, let's so go back about 10 seconds or so. So now we're on with Kron entirely. Kron hasn't actually changed strategy much at all. She's simply building up her con or building up her military. She's gotten machinery almost done researched and now it's done researched. So, she should probably be building tornadoes and tanks since she researched machinery and that's what you get for researching machinery out of factories. But I guess it's going to be so annoying for the next five minutes. Anyway, uh, yeah, anyway, so, as, actually, as it happens, looks like Ipstick is also going for an economic, or going away from his economic build, he's going for a more military build, so his military will be coming up, and Kron, as I said before, actually, Kron hasn't gone, really made use of her military expansion the early on. She's, she might be doing something earlier a minute ago, so let me go back to a minute in the past, see if she's actually doing anything, and it looks like she isn't doing anything there much either. I'm not sure what... She, oh, no, never mind. She is building a mech. I'm not sure what she's going to do with that. She's going to build a macro fab with that mech, or she's going to be building something else. It doesn't look like she has any more research coming out of her armory. So at this point, what she could do is build a macro fab and build a bunch of buildings off of that. But I'm not sure exactly what she is planning on doing. And we see if stick back before... This is, like I said, a minute in the past. Actually, back to when if stick. It, actually, no, it's six coming back, so I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go with it for, further in the future. So we're just going to be at a minute in the past, watching Kron not really take advantage of what she has. I'm rather confused at this point why she's not actually doing anything. And it looks like Ipstick is building a forward factory as well, while Kron is attacking with special ops. But the special op, oh no, Kron's special op is actually a lot. So Kron's going to be able to do a fair amount of damage unless the Marine comes and stops her, which she probably will. Yeah, because the Marine's going to come and stop her. Kron isn't going to do anything. And I'm surprised, I wonder what Kron is trying to do. She's built another importer, so she has two importers in the factory, but she hasn't actually taken advantage of either of those. I mean, Ipstick also has two importers in a factory, so they're fairly even at this point. In fact, Ipstick's getting an ATHC, and he has a second factory, so he's going to be able to attack with cloaked units. I'm just going to double-check in the past that Kron isn't doing anything tricky, following Kron again. So now we're 
a little bit poorer min in the past. And it looks like Kron is now finally building... She's building Lancers. This is a early CISO an, oh, air raiding unit. She's going to be probably using it to go around and knock out these resource processors. Once you hit a resource processor, it closes up and stops harvesting resources at all. This is a really good way of getting around your opponent's economy. But at the same time, I'm not sure if she's doing it a bit too late. She's going to not have a lot of Chrono Energy for doing an attack. Though knowing Kron, she's not a particularly micromanagement heavy player, so it shouldn't be a problem. However, she does have this mech here that's really bothering me because I'm not sure what she's trying to do with that. She's going to build a defense turret or she's going to build a macro fab or what? But at this point, she hasn't done anything with it. Well, as it stands, Ipstick is getting two mechs and a lance. He's queuing quite a bit, actually, oddly enough. And it looks like at this point, okay, Kron has two lancers up. She's probably going to start attacking further. She has no other units queued at this point, though she went back further in the past again. I'm not sure exactly why she's doing that. It seems like she's not paying as much attention as she should be. I'm not sure exactly why she keeps going back further into the past, so she's trying to redo or start a little bit, which is a common tactic, but at the same time, it seems like she's doing it quite a bit in this case, and it's being a bit confusing, since I don't know why she wasn't just building the force she had to be able to build in the first place. At any rate, Ipstick has quite expanded along the left side of the map, and Kron is staying inside her base quite a bit, and it's, like I said, she's doing a pretty strong, aggressive build, but I'm just going to check back and make sure she isn't doing anything tricky in the past. So now we're two minutes in the past, and it looks like she is still building a Lancer. She's not actually doing anything aggressive. She's not changing her economy plan at all. So I'm not sure what exactly she's doing. Ipstick has also gone into the past to see if he's going to change anything. It looks like, no, he's continuing along, building up mechs, building up a Lancer. He hasn't changed that at all. And he's just continuing to expand out. He's got his HHC going. It looks like that's going to start attacking fairly soon. Or not. It's actually staying here. He's cloaked inside his base. I'm surprised the players are not attacking each other very much. They're being very shy, very gun shy. And it's rather annoying because I'm trying to commentate an exciting game here and they're just being gun shy. So I really know. I'm just going to fast forward this because it's, I'm sure it's about as boring for you as for me. So it looks like at this point, Kron is actually going in for an attack. She's finally, okay, so someone's finally attacking. Kron is going for an attack. She's going through the center with her Lancers and her mech. And she's going to be doing, okay, so now she's attacking. I'm going to play this again. And it looks like the Lancers have stopped in the middle of the map. Well, Ipstick has gone for an attack. Ipstick is gone in. He's attacking this Marine here. Marine is trying to build another factory. It has the factory down, but the Marine should be dead in a couple shots. It looks like Kron is continuing to just hold out the middle of the base. I mean, the middle of the map. Okay, now Kron's going for an attack. So, Kron's attacking with her Lancers, her Max, her... Actually, she's going pretty all in. Honestly, I don't think she has any units in her base. Yeah, the Marine is get dead. So, yeah, Kron is going for a fairly all-in attack at this point. But, I'm not sure how... It's not going to be very successful, because the thing is, she doesn't have as much of an economy. She doesn't have as much military production. She has a tank up, which would be helpful, but even that one tank, it looks like she has... Does she have any other tanks coming up? No, a factory is being constructed, another tank is coming up, going along the right side of the map, but at the same time, her main force in the center was completely destroyed, and Ipstick is coming back for a revenge attack, and Kron is a minute in the past, quite a bit in the future, actually. She's not responding, so I'm going to check. Maybe she's getting a Chrono Port attack. Just let me check this. So, a minute in the past, and it's about seven minutes total in the game, she is building up a... Yeah, she's building up Tornades, she's building up tanks, but she's not actually attacking in the past, and Ipstick was doing a fair amount of damage, and it looks like one of her attacks with the tanks did actually do something, but it did something in a timeline that Ipstick didn't manipulate, so at this point, both players are not really doing much anyway, but Kron, at least a minute in the past, so about seven, about, as you can see, eight minutes into the game, Kron is dealing some damage, but a minute and a half prior to this, we see that Ipstick has actually come out on top, so I'm not sure exactly what Kron did in order to dominate in that particular time, but as it stands, I'm just going to fast forward a bit because nothing much is happening. As it stands, we have a... We have a... Once again, not very eventful game going on here, so... It's going to be rather... Oh, wait, never mind. Now we're getting an attack going, and we're going to be... And it looks like, oh my, it looks like those tanks actually did make quite sure working less. I'm just going to go back a couple seconds to replay this. It looks like, yeah, it looks like the tanks just came in and took care of those Lancers, no problem. So, Ipstick is not going to have a very easy time with these Lancers. And, yeah, it looks like, oh my, it looks like these Lancers, yeah, they were completely decimated. So, yeah, at this point, Ipstick is being dominant. So, yeah, it looks like, I guess that's how it worked out. So, back, it's going to... 
once again, fast forward through this. I don't want to skip too much in the future, otherwise it, it gets confusing, I've heard. So, and I can understand, it definitely would be confusing. So it looks like Ipstick is coming back with his ATHC. He's trying to attack this tank, but he's not actually doing anything to it. And the tank's going to just run in here, start dealing some damage. Ipstick is actually... Ipstick has got a Chrono Porter. Holy cow, I didn't see that coming up. So yeah, Ipstick's got a Chrono Porter up, and... Once again, this factory is still producing units. He's got another factory as well, so he's got two factories building up. He's got his tanks, and two tanks against one, and like I said, better economy as well. So now these Tornados are coming up with another tank, but the tanks, the three tanks should dominate these, because I think these Tornados are, while they are strong against ground, tanks are really strong against air. So, at this point, yeah, the tank is Tornados, so it looks like Istik's forces are probably going to win it out, but it's hard to tell, because I mean, two Tornados against one tank is still a fair bit of an advantage. So it looks like, yeah, the tanks, the tank is dead, the Tornado is attacking, and Istik is attacking with his Tornados, so... Ipstick probably will, yeah, Ipstick will come out on top. He has two Tornados to one, and Tornados aren't very good against air anyway. So, Ipstick is going to come out on top in this engagement, but it looks like Kron actually has decided to be aggressive, though, which is nice. So, Kron, once again, still in two factories. Both players on two factories. And it looks like Ipstick actually hasn't been producing much out of his factories. I'm not sure if he's focusing on saving up for Chrono Porter, but he should really be sending more back. Actually, because it's Chrono Porter, I'm just going to jump forward a bit. So, Ipstick about... I'm just going to fast forward a bit easier that way. So, fast forwarding through, Istik is just going to be staying in the center while Kron continues to build up. And Kron, as you see, has the left side as well. No one's taking the right side, oddly enough, even though he can have more resources in a safe position for Kron. And Istik is going for an attack. Istik's attack is coming in. It's not going to last very long. This Tornado is completely destroyed. And Kron is counter. or she's not going to counterattack. She's posturing to counterattack, but she didn't actually go through with it. So, at this point, Istik has a teleporter set up. So, he's getting quite deep into gate tech. Jira has another teleporter as well. He's very deep into gate tech. So he's going to be able to really protect his units across the map. And it looks like, I'm just going to go back a bit, I'm not sure he might have Chrono Porter stuff back as it is. It looks like he didn't, no, he didn't Chrono Porter anything yet. He, so he's still not Chrono Porter anything, he's not using his Chrono Porter, which is interesting, I would have expected. I'm just going to look maybe in a minute in the past, he has something, and he's getting, he gets frigates later on in the future. And near the present, he also has quite a few frigates, so he hasn't used the Chrono Porter yet, he hasn't gone and manipulated it. So back to two minutes in the past. So this is about a little over 14 minutes in the past, 10 minutes into the game, and Istik has... Let's back around where we were. So the teleporter is just about complete, and Ipstick is just holding the center. So Ipstick has the center, has an economic advantage. Kron is not taking the right side of the map right here, which is rather odd, even though she could easily take it and hold it, but or at least more easily than the left side of the map. She does not have as many resource crates. She'd have to fight her way through the left side of the map through Ipstick's crates, although admittedly they aren't very well defended either. So at this point, both players just holding up in the center and trying to make the best what they have, but looks like they're just posturing, and they might have done something further in the past. I'm just gonna, they're fast forwarding up to me, if they, if anything looks weird when they catch up, I'm gonna go check it out, but at this point it probably is just gonna be more posturing, and not much going on, and it looks like, okay, Kron is attacking back, or she's posturing to attack, nope, she is going for an attack, so not, not just posturing, so she goes for an attack, and Ipstick actually has Frigates as well, Frigates are air units that are great against other air units, and so they're gonna be making short work of these Tornados, as soon as the tank is destroyed, yeah, so the tank is destroyed, so the Frigates are gonna be able to tear apart these Tornados, and even five against, Five against two with tank support, yeah, these Tornados are going down pretty fast. Or at least they would be if more than that, that Ipstick was actually focusing. He seems to be focusing as well as he should be on these control of these units. And it doesn't look like anything actually did change going into the past. And Ipstick also, once again, is not using his Chrono Board as he should be. And the Tornados have actually won! How about that? So, better micromanagement on Kron's part made the Tornados win quite well, quite decidedly. So, at this point, Kron's going to have a fairly easy time going into the base unless Ipstick actually takes advantage of his Chrono Board or sends units back from the future and redoes his attack, and I don't know if he's doing that right now, I'm just going to go back to make sure... See, he was right here, so it's about two minutes, so ten seconds ago, he didn't really do anything, he hasn't changed anything here. Three minutes ago, as well, he is going to be changing not much, he's... Yeah, he's not micromanaging this much either, he is using one of the frigates to attack a turn odd nearer to the one that was more damaged, but it looks like, regardless, nothing is going to change in this attack, so... At this point, Ipstick hasn't really done anything different and this attack is going to still be successful. So Kron is going to be able to attack. She has, she has now six Tornados coming in, and these six Tornados are going to be able to make short work of Istik's base unless he goes into the future before one of the time waves catches up with this defeat and sends those units back in time to help support themselves. But at this point, it looks like Kron is going to be able to just completely get away with this. He's going to take out this teleporter, this front teleporter. I'm not sure why he built, because the thing is, this is a rather small map. This back teleporter right here should be able to project units pretty much across the entire map, and Kron actually has three factories now. So Kron has even better production, so, at this point, Kron has quite the advantage. Oddly enough, Ipstick had a really massive economic advantage early on in the game, but he has not been able to translate that into a proper tactical advantage, a proper military advantage. He does have a macro pad, though, and Kron doesn't have any of those. 
but still, one cruiser and frigate are not going to be able to do as much as they should. I mean, these tornadoes, yeah, sure, they're not great against air, but six tornadoes and now two tanks against... I mean, unless that cruiser has a nuke, he doesn't have much of a chance to be able to get out of this. And it looks like it doesn't, so as it stands, there is not much that Ipstick can do unless he goes in the future, sends something back, and attacks, because he does not have the resources apparently, or at least he hasn't been making use of them, to just capitalize on the situation, because at this point, he is... Yeah, he's falling back. This cruiser, like I said, did not last long at all. So we're seeing... We're seeing a total steamroll from Kron here, unless Ipsic can do anything, something in the future. Since I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm really surprised. He's had this Chrono Porter almost the entire game. He has not used it yet. There's... Okay, this he did change the stuff the Heavy Cruiser. The Heavy Cruiser was not killed yet, but he's just building another Heavy Cruiser, and he's going to try to go with two Cruisers, but really, he should be going for Frigates, he should be going for Mar Tanks. That combined would be much better. Actually, he does have a Frigate, my mistake. But that combined would be much better option, because the thing is, Cruisers are powerful, but the best you could do right now is drop a nuke on these guys. And even then, it's not going to help. And now that Chrono Port has been destroyed, so now the only way you can get around and actually Chrono Port back is by causing an ontological par or sorry, a grandfather paradox. And that would not be pro that would not be a good idea at all. So Chrono's actually gone quite into the future. And I'm just going to fast forward to this because apparently Ipstick isn't going to be able to do much about it. Actually, that's a good question. Has Ipstick done anything about it? Just going back a couple seconds ago, it looks like. No, Ipstick has not. That cruiser just jumped, by the way, in case you were wondering. But, actually, it looks like... Oh my, I'm gonna review this. It looks like Ipstick actually had... Let's see here, he sends his cruiser out. So this is about four minutes in the past. He can't control this, I'm just watching it to review. So it looks like four minutes in the past, he sends a cruiser back, and actually, somehow is managing... Wow, he's actually managing... Oh, I see, they're not attacking him, they're attacking the gates, that's the thing. So, now these cruisers... Okay, so the cruiser's gonna be able to take advantage of the fact that they're not focusing on it, but... It's still losing the Chrono Porter. That's pretty big. I mean, he's losing that Chrono Porter. He can't send any units back in time to support. So, at this point, he's just relying on the units he currently has. And he's holding off. But, I mean, like I said, Kron's base, I mean, she has three factories, two importers. She's got fairly healthy economy. It's not the best, but it's good enough. So, at this point, it looks like it really has much chance for Ipstick. I mean, these tanks don't even care about this cruiser at this point. They're just going through, trying to mop up. Ipstick's trying to do what he can, but I don't think he's going to have much of a chance. It looks like... He's just holding out what he can, but, I mean, these are tanks. I don't know why he built a frigate actually to begin with. He should be building Mar Tank, And now he is. Okay, so he is building Mar Tanks, and he's going to be building up a bit, but I don't know how much this is actually going to affect things. He really doesn't have much to work with. It looks like, yeah, it doesn't look like there's really much hope. So, at this point, he's sending in a Mar Tank. He did clean up the tanks, but really, just consider this. I mean, there's six tanks in Kron's base. There's one cruiser, one frigate, and a Mar tank. The Mar tanks are good against ground, cruisers are good against everything, but all these... Oh, nine tanks now! Yeah, this this is just simple numerical advantage. Those nine tanks are going to be able to just make short work of what's here. So really, it's just a matter of whenever Kron wants to press her advantage. And it looks like Kron is going to press her advantage at 15 minutes into the game, which is well, well in the past for her, but 15 minutes into the game, Kron presses the advantage and goes in. The Mar tank deals some damage. It tries to get rid of this... No, it doesn't do anything. That Mar tank is dealt a bit of damage to one of the tanks, and it's... Next one as well. He's actually doing a good job. Oh, he almost he was going for the commander at first, and now he's not. And it looks like he is going for the commander again, but if he actually manages to do this, no, he doesn't. So the commander is actually fairly weak, though, so Kron's going to want to... She might want to go in and fix that, but the commander... Because if that commander dies, the rest of these troops are going to have to control manually, and that looks like a lot of Kron energy, eliminate a lot of the micromanagement potential, but at this point, it's in the base. It doesn't matter. It's too late now, so all Ipstick could do is go back even further and try to stop it. It looks like that might be what he's trying to do, but at this point... Kron's attack is just going to be able to deal a ton of damage. It doesn't look like Ipstick has much he could do. I don't know what he is doing. I'm just going to go back a bit in the past, about three minutes in the past, to see if Ipstick... Ipstick looks like he's trying to change something, and he actually is retreating a bit into his base. So, once again, we're still at the 15-minute mark, but Ipstick has actually gone back into his base and avoided the attack at the outset, but it doesn't really matter at this point. There's too much... I mean, there's nine tanks, there's three Lancers. There's just so much going on here that it's just going to be dealing too much damage. To, yeah, this is going to be so hard to counter for Ipstick. I don't know really what he could do at this point. All he could have really done is use the Chrono Porter, which is really odd that he didn't use. I'm I'm kind of sad that would have been a really exciting game if he had used that, but as it stands, he's not using the Chrono Porter, and he's just sitting up with this, and he's being steamrolled at this point. He's trying to change something in the past, I think, or at least review what he could have done, but I really don't think there's anything he could have done. I mean, he might he might be able to change some of the tactics, but there really isn't much. Just get, we can go over that again if you want. So, we'll see here. Let's see. We have... Yeah, once again, he's trying to retreat. So he's trying to go back, use his buildings as cover, but it's really not doing too much good. The Mar tanks are doing a lot, and it looks like, yeah, Ipstick is pretty much doomed. He knows it. He can see it. He's just, even just the Lancers alone are doing doing him in. So 
These Mark Tanks, not a bad idea, but it really is too little too late. Too little too late was a lot of what Ipstick's game plan was. He did not have... Didn't use his Chrono Porters, didn't use his setup. He just tried to set it up with changing the pass, but that Chrono Porter would have really done it, because that was his advantage, and that's pretty expensive, too. I mean, one Chrono Porter, that's... That's about as many resources as about six or seven of these Mar tanks and about four of these tanks. I mean, that's a lot of money, and if he had spent it well, well actually, he took advantage of that Chrono Porter, used it to reinforce himself, he might have actually had a chance, but at this point, he did not take advantage of the advantage that he'd given himself, and it looks like that's the game, so good game, I hope you enjoyed it.